trying to get everything level. You know how I am. I've got tea. How about you? Have you got tea? Then <laughs> Leanne's, uh, Leanne's traveling. I'm keeping her company. Yep. Keeping her company. So y'all get on in here. I got a cup of hot tea. I need a cup of caffeine. No, I haven't done many tea times since Ben got out. And we've been trying to get everything done to get him ready. I'm getting my little thing ready for Monday. Anyway, y'all get on in here. So, today I had the I don't want us. Do you ever get those? Leanne just asked me, are you going to do a show? And I'll do a tea time. And I said, I want to take a nap. <laughs> it's what I want. And I thought, you know, maybe when I tell myself I don't want to do something, that's my cue to do it anyway. You know, that's hard stuff. It's really hard stuff. So, I didn't get the teapot hot, so I ran my hot water as hot as I could get it, and I got pretty hot water, and it made tea, so the I Don't Want Us turned into tea time with you, with a cup of hot water and two Earl Grey tea bags in it. And it's just the right temperature, too. Anyway, that's probably going to be... I gotta have a word for it. And Kathy told me my, my word last year was mercy. The word I picked last year was mercy. And you know, I may not have remembered the word, but I felt the concept all year long. And mercy is a beautiful word, a beautiful word. When we get the I don't want us, we try to give in. We give in to the negative side of our personalities. We, we give in to that. Uh, we also have to control the other side of our personalities, which is, is obsession. Obsession with, uh, you know, you see a Facebook ad and you go order something. Um, you, you see an Amazon ad and you, you go order it. So we've got to learn to control each, you know, the, you know, we've got an angel and a devil sitting on our shoulders and there's a balance between them and we don't need to allow the, to give in to the devil saying, oh, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. And are, are the angel, angel saying, you can do that. You can do that. And we're trying to push her away or him away or whatever an angel is. And we've just got to give up on the negativity because fear, not wanting to do something, is comes from fear. So everybody, we've just got to let go of our fear. Let go of the I don't want us. And when we hear... Those words come out of our mouth. That should be the um, emphasis for us to set our timer. Let me set it right here. I can do it. Two minutes. You know, I really wanted to take a nap. But guess what? I wanted to talk to you even more because I had, had a realization. Amazon one click is dangerous. So don't let the I don't want us give in to pulling you away from what you really want. Because we have, as Scott Adams says, we set up systems to help us. And that's what our routines are. And that's what I've been writing about today is our routines guide us. They give us the power. 
They put us on automatic pilot and help us to get things done. And then as the routines and the habits kick in, we don't have to, we don't have to think anymore. And when we get our brain out of it, because I don't want to, comes from the side of our brain that is a fear. And even though it doesn't seem like it, it's, it's keeping us from our purpose. Our brains do need autopilot. They need it to help us to just, you automatically go through the motions. You make your tea at three o'clock. You make your bed in the morning. I mean, that's a habit that's hard to get out of once, once you do this. So setting up our systems, building our routines, building our, our routines one habit at a time helps us to create a home that we deserve. You know, for years and years and years, back even when I was a kid, we heard that the women's livers uh, talk about sharing housework and you know it's great to have somebody that will help you in the house but men don't see it the same way we do I I believe this with all my heart they don't see the dirty I mean this morning I asked Robert I said if if um, if the Roomba were to ever break would you buy another one and he said well I'd buy one that's more quiet so he, that means he'd spend more money um, but we have to realize that when you get your routines in place, it's like having a Roomba that's set up on a schedule that you can do every day. Before we had the Roomba, and we got the Roomba because I got the, I got bronchitis. And every morning I would run through the house with, with my dust mop and dust mop the floors. I was the Roomba. Those habits were in place and then I got sick and, and was not able to do it for about 10 days. I missed my sister's wedding. So being on automatic pilot establishes these, you know, these little habits that when you string them together into routines, these things change our life and changes our house, it changes our house totally. So let's release the negativity of the I don't want us and let's get something done. Whenever you hear yourself say, I don't want to, then get up and do something about it. Even if it's just two minutes, two minutes is better than nothing. Two minutes is better than nothing. So here's to putting ourselves on automatic pilot. Here's to establishing routines and not beating ourselves up because we can't do a full-blown fly lady routine right off the bat. Today, I spent a lot of my day printing out the New York Times crossword puzzles for Robert. It's his favorite thing in the world besides me and the dog and the cats. And he doesn't even know I've done it yet. And I've, I've worked on the printer to get it going. And it's just absolutely wonderful that I'm going to give him a gift. It took me a while to print them, it's a half a year's worth. I don't think I've printed them since April. And lots been going on. So we can get things done if we just put our mind to it. Uh, Scott Adams was talking about this morning and, you know, this man has changed my life. I've been reading his books for 20 years. 20 years. One of his first books, The, the Future According to Dilbert, pretty much changed my whole attitude about things. I, I could understand the world a little better. And his books have, have changed my life, every one of them. And I trust his opinion more than I trust the opinions of talking heads on TV because they have an agenda and he doesn't have an agenda. 
He just wants you to think. Use your head. Don't let people manipulate you. You have a brain, and I have a brain. And I've been saying for many years, I didn't trust a lot of a lot of things about the news media, or pollsters, or anything. I don't know any self-respecting conservative person that would take a poll. I haven't. I don't take polls. No. Nope. Dollar Tree does probably does not have Robert's New York Times crossword puzzles. He likes the Saturday and Sunday puzzles. So I subscribe to the New York Times for two reasons. I don't read their news. I have their crossword puzzles and I look at their election results. They have great election results on election night. By precinct all over the country. It's wonderful. So getting back to our routines. I have a routine every morning. I get up and I get dressed to lace up shoes. I, I put a load of laundry in. I empty the dishwasher if it needs emptied. And I listen to Scott Adams at 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, Standard Time. I listen to Scott Adams. He's part of my morning routine. He sets the tone for my day. And I would like to say... Congratulations to him. He got engaged this this week. He got engaged. And you want to know how he did it? And that's this is all I know. He put the engagement ring in a, a box of candies. C's candies. So, folks. And he said, you know, he didn't think it would change his attitude when Christina said yes. But he said, he said, I'm a totally different person. I'm a totally different person now that Christina has, has agreed to be my wife. And isn't that a beautiful thing? That's a beautiful thing. Uh, when Robert and I met each other, who is Scott Adams? Scott Adams writes the Dilbert comic strip about office situations. He has a he has a Periscope uh, on Periscope.com and his his it's also on YouTube. Scott Adams says he's on Twitter, and so Scott Adams he is a trusted he is trusted. I trust him. I trust him with his take on the news because most of the time I think the same way he does when it comes to certain things. Plus he's he's a great author. And we have talked personally about writing books. He, he did some, uh, he did a little podcast about how to write a book and he left out one important thing. <laughs> and I, I called him on his app. He has an app where you can talk to an ex expert. And I, I called him up and said, you left out one important thing. Your area has to be clean. It can't be piled up. He said, you're so right. I have to have all my space when I'm writing uh, clear. And a lot of times he goes to hotels in different parts of the country to write when he writes. So it's lots of fun to talk to another author. I don't get to talk to many authors um, on, on my own, but it's fun when I get to. So we agreed with that. He loves routines. He calls them systems. It's a system. And I love that about it. We put a system in place to make things happen. Our routines make things happen. And it's wonderful. Uh, I think the tea was delivered to Leanne's house today. I believe it was delivered today. So if it was, I may have to run up there and get it and try it before she gets home. <laughs> anyway, folks, y'all have a wonderful rest of the afternoon. There could be a nap in my future. There really could be. I've been working on next week stuff and, um, you know, next week we've got New Year's coming up. 
you T is in the T is in the house. Oh my goodness. That's great. There are 15 cartons of it. <laughs> we got the T in. He does blogs, but he mainly, uh, Scott Adams mainly does his Periscope podcast and he puts it up on YouTube. His brother puts it up on YouTube and he writes his Dilbert comic strip. And he's had some tough times in his life. He lost his stepson last year to um, an overdose. And it, it's, it was, it was a really sad situation and he had had a head injury as a teenager and they couldn't really do anything to help him. He had, he, he could not stop his actions of being obsessive. He had no fear of anything. And he got hurt on a bicycle accident when he was 14 and it was just, it broke Scott's heart. It really did. So folks, we have lots to be thankful for. We really do. We have a whole lot to be thankful for. And it's important for us to show that thankfulness. So later on this afternoon, I'll probably write Scott Adams a thank you note for, for him being a great influence on my life and helping me as, as be a part of my morning routine and setting the tone for my day because it, it's like the crossword puzzles help Robert with his brain power it helps me with my brain power to think of things a little differently and see how people can manipulate and play games with you just with words. Sometimes that can be a good thing when you need motivating and need moving in a persuasion, he calls it. And he gives us a, a, a big list of books to read and Patty and I have read every one of them. And they're just interesting things. So in this next year, I'm going to have a, I don't really like goals, but I'm, I'm going to do my best to read a couple of books every week. I love audible books. I listen, you know, you can listen to an audible book in about eight hours. And for me, that would be, take a couple of days to do that. When I'm in the car driving, I love to read audible books. I can tell you where I was when I heard a certain phrase, I see it in my head. It's so weird how it all fits together. So folks, spend some time today being thankful, getting rid of the I don't want us. Because, you know, when you really don't want it, Scott talks about, <laughs> this is funny, he gives himself permission to not go to the gym. He goes to the gym every day. It's about a 20 minute drive. And, but here's his rules. He has, he set up rules in place and these are really good rules. The good rules are if he doesn't want to go to the gym, he says, okay, I've got permission to not go to the gym, but I've, I got to take my gym bag cause it's already packed. He packs it the night before. I'm going to put that in the car. He's already put it in the car the night before. He said, I'm just going to get in the car. And if I still feel the same way when I get to the gym, I don't have to go in. So he goes through the motions. This is like going through our routine motions. He goes through the motions. And by the time he gets to the gym, it's one foot in front of the other. He's ready to walk in and work out. So that's kind of fun, isn't it? Somebody's uh, complaining about, uh, Della's saying it's, it's scary to think about somebody manipulating us. Well, the news media manipulates us every single day. Yep, because of omission. They leave things out. And that's on both sides, both sides. So I want to balance. I want to balance. So here's to a new year of being mindful ourselves of what's going on not taking anybody's word for it, studying on your own, w listening to speeches on your own and not the talking heads afterwards. Here's to 2020. And it's going to be a fun year because we're going to see Ben beat cancer. 
We're going to see Dina beat cancer. We're going to see um, our homes come together. We're going to see our clutter leaving our house. We're going to see lots of changes in this next year. And we can do it because we have the power. We have the power. It's right here. We can get rid of the negativity. We can get rid of the I don't want us. And we can get up off our butts and we can do something. We can do something about it. I love you all. Drink up.